Looking for a guaranteed way to create content that resonates with your audience? Start a podcast, interview your ideal clients, and let them choose the topic of the interview. Because if your ideal clients care about the topic, there's a good chance the rest of your audience will care about it too. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I am your host for today's episode, Nikki Ivey with Sweetfish Media. I've got with me today, Jenny Stanley, who is founder and managing director at Appetite Creative Solutions. Jenny, how are you doing today? I'm very well, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you today, Jenny. You and I are going to get into how to ride the wave as the, as the tides change in B2B. And you've got some, some really good little nuggets to pass along to, uh, to myself and our listeners. But before we get into all that, Jenny, I would love it if you would just give us a little bit of background on yourself and, and what you and the folks at Appetite Creative have been up to these days. Sure, sure. So we at Appetite Creative are a creative technology company. That means we really focus on bringing the latest uh, technology to our clients in a way that will help them to obviously have effective results, but in a way which will also be impactful and look at new ways of maybe solving old problems. Nice. Yeah. So that that really is a good lead in to to what we're going to talk about today. And I love it because it's mm. applicable. The listeners to the show, they tend to be marketers, uh, marketing leaders, that is sales leaders, and, and actually a good, a good cross section of individual contributors. And I feel like uh, a lot of the things that you're going to talk about with respect to this changing tide are, you know, applicable to folks at any level um, mm. in, in the B2B space. So one of the things that, that we had talked about offline was, you know, the, the new generation of, of buyers and folks who need to be marketed to and what types of things that they're looking for and what they're receptive to. Dig into that a little bit for us, Jenny. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it's quite a, a forgotten or not known stat, which is like today, 18 to 34 year olds represent almost 50% of all the B2B buyers. And digital is, is basically the only way to get hold of these people. I mean, this demographic is the is the Gen X, sorry, the Gen Z and the millennials that work in these businesses that we're we're trying to market market to really are a hundred percent of the time engaged with their mobile phone. They are absolutely looking on their social media for information. They are not looking for cold calls. And I think it's kind of forgotten that we really need to make sure that we're marketing to this group of people actually in a way that actually speaks to them rather than historically. So it's it's a massive change, I think, in 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 where we are. Yeah. And what's what's funny when you say that, what it what it you know sort of brings to mind is the way that folks are having the conversation about who that audience is and what they need within a given B2B organization. Because what's happening is as as marketers, I think folks key into that idea that you just described, right? Who the folks are and how they want to be marketed to. They mm-hmm. key into that pretty pretty easily. But then the sales team still has a model um, mm-hmm. that includes cold calling or sometimes that is just centered around around mm. calling. And so then there's this sort of disconnect or this misalignment that happens. And so that's, I think, one of the first things that might need to change if people are going to ride the wave is just getting on the same page of how mm. to do that. Because what I see is folks having that, com- salespeople, two other salespeople having the conversation about whether or not cold calling is dead and not including in, in their thought processes, in our thought processes, because I'm guilty of it too, you know, the larger picture of of what the customer or, or prospect is experiencing and, and what marketing what marketers are trying to do to keep up with it. 
So I, I think it's really important to consider that. So with that in mind, how is it that businesses need to, to keep up with technology and, and be more open-minded um, toward using all of, all of the new tech that, that there's out there? Because I know you said, you know, it's a matter of this new generation being on their mobile phones and it's a, they're not wanting cold calls. How does that play into uh, how f- marketers and salespeople use technology to reach these people? Sure. I mean, it's a whole it's a whole kind of twofold thing. One is really about mindset, which is really about actual the changing the changing way that the digital age has actually led us to. And, and what I mean by that is that when you actually are involving in a, in a digital conversation, the conversation can be very much tailored to you. And then we can talk about RTV and we can talk about retargeting and all those type of things. And so what that means is that we really need to have tailored options. So you can't just throw a catalog at somebody and expect them to be able to actually have the time to flick through every single page and pick up the products that are relevant to them. Actually, it's kind of flipping that on its head and saying, we actually need to offer tailored options. We can't just be you know, the cheap salesman uh, who puts the arm around and says, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. No, it needs to be the reverse. These are the things that, you know, we can do for you. These are the things which are personally um, curated content, which is, is applicable to you. And then, of course, the client has the option to be able to pick through what's relevant to them rather than just kind of showing them everything. And I think that changes just the, the mindset. And then, of course, we have to think about the way from the digital age that we can actually be present. And it is so surprising that when we talk to some B2B clients that they might not have a, a, a great website. And why? Because they didn't really think it was that important. Or they might not have a presence on social media. Why? Well, you know, it was social media for B2C. And it's kind of crazy because at the end of the day, whether you're speaking to somebody who is a buyer or not, they're on social media. 18 to 35-year-olds are on social media. So why would they, you not want to be present with your brand? Why would you not want to be where they are? You need to have complete information. You need to have online support. You need to have chatbots. You need to have quality content. You need to have emails which are sent at the right time with personalization. And it's craziness because, you know, as a company, we come from the digital age. So when when, when when people are, are speaking to us about the fact that they don't have a CRM and they don't have a newsletter list, we're kind of like a little bit shocked because, well, of course you should, or, or of course you must have a, a website. What do you mean you don't have a domain name registered? Mm-hmm. But it's these kind of simple facts that, you know, it's almost like traditional businesses that haven't really thought about it have forgotten that actually we need to actually cater for the millennial the millennial audience, you know, good websites don't exist in the hard sell. They don't, you know, they don't expect you to to go rooting around. It's about being able to give real evidence, real examples of what you can solve, how you can benefit. It's, it's really much more a content sell um, rather than kind of the cold call. And that's not to say, by the way, that cold calling or certainly calling isn't actually the way forward from a sales tactical point of view. However, it's about the way that you do it, the, the inf- uh, information, the, the research that you do before, the way that you can present what you have actually to be in line with the messaging that actually the, the client wants to hear. There's something which is personalized and tailored to them. It's not to say that you don't pick up the phone. In fact, the fact that hardly anybody ever does pick up the phone means that if you do manage to connect with a customer, you've got a, you've got a great option. But you need then to be able to have the backup because once that customer gets off the phone, the first thing they're going to do is look at your website. And if you don't have a good website, you've wasted your time on the phone anyway. Right. So I think it's kind of like the two things. The, the mindset, which is one, one size fits all no longer works. And we need to think about content and evidence and all those type of things. And then the second is to make sure that you have all of those digital blocks in a row, that you're on social media, that you're talking about thought leadership, opinion pieces, social media, websites, all of these different things. And that is actually the way to really elevate your position and, and speak to people in their 18 to 35 age group. Right, right. And I think you 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 hit a couple things that I want to make sure that people catch, right? So there's this idea of not just personalization, but humanization, right? Understanding Mm. that going from like beyond persona into like person, just person. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll sort of, I won't say it'll solve the problem for itself, but it'll certainly get you on the right track in terms of, you know, how to think about this. And when you look at, because you also mentioned this idea that that kind of stuff is for B2C. When you look at those B2B brands who have started to market themselves in the way that B2C brands do, because B2C brands understand that you, it is about an experience and it's as at least as much about how you're able to make prospects feel about themselves as mm-hmm. it is 
you know, about how you're able to make them feel about you. And I think so much of the beginning of B2B sales and marketing is how can I get them to feel about me, right? Can I get them to see my Mm. product as what they want? Can I get them to see me as credible or knowledgeable? And all of that, yeah, it counts, but everybody's got that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you take this approach, like you're talking about of, you know, starting to try and influence how folks feel about themselves. And all I mean is, Telling the story that gets them to understand that what you're providing can help them be successful. So getting them to visualize their success with your solution, I think can be can be so much more powerful. And, and social is just the way to do that. And so it, it kind of goes into this other, this last little, little point was how the customer experience needs to be tailored and personalized, which is what you were just mentioning. But B2C, again, is so much more farther along when it comes to that. But I think that in reality, we're kind of, if anything, all in the trenches together. And so, mm-hmm. so if, if from a salesperson's perspective or, or the complete revenue team's perspective, if, if we're thinking about these not just as, you know, alternative tools to have in our belt when the, regu- the you know, traditional sales tools fail, and we start to think about it as just a shift in the direction that everything needs to go, it can really be a differentiator. But Jenny, before, before we... Um, round out this segment, is there what other, either things that you see on the horizon or or kind of parting wisdom uh, would you give for folks listening here who are, who are wanting to be able to ride this wave? Yeah. I mean, for me, what you were saying about B2C being more, more advanced than B2B is really interesting because actually that becomes a massive advantage to B2B. Why? Because actually it means that the cost of doing some of these really interesting things. So for example, augmented reality, virtual reality, applications, all these type of things where actually B2C started harnessing that maybe three, four, five years ago means that actually the investment that's happened into those, those areas, those campaigns, all of those things means that the cost of that technology has really come down. So, you know, it means that actually B2B has the opportunity to actually make sense and make use of those type of technologies as well. You know, the notion that bias habits are changing and have changed due to technology is is no new concept and we have to keep up with it, whether that's B2C or B2B. Mm -hmm. Um, Technology is basically running through the veins of marketing and always has done. But the fact that we now have so many different options and so many tools available to us and because B2C is able to kind of take that forward means that the B2B arena has so much case studies, information, the ability to use technologies that might have been before five years ago, way too expensive to be involved in has the ability to be integrated into a campaign and of course like you say have the ability to massively stand out it's a huge differentiator and actually if you can do it in a way that means you're actually helping to solve a problem not just stand out for standing out sake but to actually have some sort of marketing message in there to solve a problem to use a chatbot or a technology to allow for interaction directly with your marketing message actually means you're going to be able to sell so much more. And I think what you said between marketing and sales being two different positions, I think what we're seeing now, certainly in the last two to three years, is that those two roles are really starting to combine. And it's not really about one versus the other. It's about the two really working together. And I think that's a massive change that we've really started to see. And that's B2C or B2B. And I think that will become more and more and more molded together. And it just means that we need to really, really think about the way that we want to do to describe the services that we offer, to be able to make the messaging in palatable bite-sized chunks in the type of platforms and in the type of technology and language that B2B buyers and B2C buyers um, actually want to be spoken to. Exactly. Perfect. I couldn't have said it better myself. So Jenny, now that I have successfully picked your brain and seen what I can get (laughs) out of it, I am interested in what you are putting in it. Jenny, tell us about a a learning resource that you've been engaging with uh, that's, you know, either informed your approach or has just got you excited these days? Sure. So, I mean, one of the things that I've actually been using, which is, it's it's not necessarily about industry uh, information, but it's really kind of helped me try and focus as an application and it's called Calm. I don't know if you've heard of it. So there's like all of these different options and you have the ability to, to listen to different sounds like rain falling or the waves crashing or lots of different things. And it's really helped me actually to be able to to, to learn to meditate. And I'm not that good at it so far. I can last about two minutes, which apparently people can do it for up to hours, right? And you're laughing because you know people can do this for a long time. And it's something I've never been able to really do. But with this application, 
I've been able to sit quietly in my own space, in my own headspace, and be able to kind of meditate for two minutes. And it's really strange because even doing that every day has really been able to help me focus on on things and actually put things in a bit of perspective, which I think has helped me um, to to have a more productive day. So that's kind of what I've been doing, but it's not necessarily uh, industry information, but it's certainly been helping me along my way. No, I love it. What I what I really love is when I ask that question and someone gives an answer that I've not heard yet. So you win, Jenny. You Yay. win. <laughs> and I and I I giggle because I know what you mean, right? Like no one who knows me would ever associate like Nikki Ivy with meditation. And so, but I <laughs> I tried I tried the Headspace app, which is pretty similar okay. to what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. And like just was really thankful that the first few are like geared at people like me, their first few little lessons. They're like, yeah, don't put too much pressure on yourself. This, these first are going to teach you how to meditate versus yeah. just like you jumping in and, and, you know, just sitting and doing that. Like my little folks at home, you can't see it, but I've got this little statue of a, of a cat meditating. He's given a gesture. And so that's the picture I have in my head, right? Of the person mm-hmm. you know, sitting cross leg with their hands on their knees. And I'm not there yet either, Jenny. So we'll get to the, yeah, yeah. this journey together. Hey, I know a lot of folks <laughs> listening are, you know, are as impressed as I am with the advice you've given. And as, you know, as curious and enthusiastic about following along with you as I am. Jenny, how can folks connect with you? Sure. So um, you can get me on my email, jennifer at appetitecreative.com. Or you can um, follow me on uh, Twitter. And that's at Appetite Mobile. Sweet. You heard her. Go do it. (laughs) This has been great, Jenny. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.